<laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to the Vanilla Major 2016. I'm Toby One here with Wagamama. Happy to be here again He's as we go noodle. into game two. You're such a noodle. And what happened here? Kaipi winning against No Diggity. I know. So First game lost. They have broken the zero here. No Diggity. They need to somehow... <laughs> Reshape because that was an 18 minute defeat. And that it was like it, it wasn't even just one of those, you know what? We'll slowly work our way and then it'll be like it'll all disappear. It was you got drowed. Yeah. You got drowed so hard. Definitely. And it's just so many things that worked out great because of the drow, and they couldn't punish the drow in her lane either. Yeah. Because the Windrunner was winning mid against Venomancer due to a damage. The Enigma was doing so much because the Adelons got so much extra damage. I mean, we were seeing that kill and Syndrome on bottom. Every single little Adelon got plus 29. It's just brutal. And yeah, I think they have a good idea though, drafting against No Diggity, picking the Void <laughs> first. That's definitely a key hero. And, na and now we now we see, because, okay, okay, I'm, I'm going to tell you a story mm -hmm. right now. I'm of all the, ears. Of the Mouse, Mouse Sports Boot Camp before TI happened. Join and Dota? Sindarin, uh, there she did in the JD offices. Mm -hmm. uh, and what Sindarin did was basically, here's a whiteboard. Here's three heroes you're going to work on. That's it. Mm -hmm. and then they just played games. Yeah. Well, with the synergy work here and there. I don't know if it's evolved since that point, but you look at someone like Keizu, who always came under fire. Like, he was under fire, like, uh, like General was under fire. It's like, oh, he only plays Batrider. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he, oh, he's crap at everything else. Um, but no he obviously had to be aware that coming into this qualifier, it could just, like, his heroes could be banned out. So you had to plan for something. You have to have some level of depth to this. Mm -hmm. Like, I know we were joking about before, like, Cinder, and he plays, like, Bane, or he plays VS. He plays Bane, and he plays VS. Yeah. Like, there's only so much chopping and changing you can do to this well, to make it work. No Diggity is one of the ultimate teams when it comes to only having a few heroes and building different stuff with only these limited little hero pool. And it can work quite far. Uh, and I think you don't need to be able to play 20 different heroes on your position expertly. And I'm not trying to say as well for anyone watching that, you know, Keizu only plays Void and he only plays Nature's Prophet. He does spam a ton of Lone Reds, and I've played against him in pubs, and he does exclusively practice his heroes. So I think you're right. It's still probably the same thing. Like, you know, focus on a few. And I'm behind Sindarin in that. That's a good mentality. Oh. But at some point, I just look at that last game and go, Keizu was not the initiator for your team, and they've needed that a lot. When he plays... On his Beastmaster, when he plays on his Void, when he plays on his Nature's Prophet, he always sets up the fights yep. for his team. And you cannot do this. And last game was just a complete flop in the laning phase. How much are you waiting for No Diggity to actually draw Kai P right now? <laughs> they <laughs> just take their picks and go with it? Well, yeah. Sure. Well, it's, it's, it's actually even stronger because you're running with, running it with a VS. So like, you, you're lacquering is on. And then you give, like, um, that you can give Ira his old signature hero. Um, so you run like a safe lane Keizu draw ranger. Sure. Just fucking with everything right now. Mm -hmm. um, and you run a All right. you run a dual off lane with Luna VS. So we we, you actually we bring throw Cinderin's whiteboard out the window. Yeah. That's okay. You, you basically Step bring one. you bring back the classic fanatic draft. <laughs> right. <laughs> it wasn't with a draw ranger doing <laughs> that. And this is the worst idea ever. So never do this in a pub. Um, but it's just one of those things where like you know what. That actually, in a way, could work. And then Enigma goes into Radiant Jungle and you force down buildings really early on. <laughs> right. Well, could... I guess I, I don't, I don't want to see Quote for playing the... Uh, I still wish he had the Invoker. I think with his Invoker, they could have actually controlled a lot more than they did in the last game. With uh, Quote Quest Invoker, you could probably control the world. He plays it very well. Oh. Uh, and I just have to pause here for a second and look at this. Because Kaipi just second-picked Tinker after a Faces Void. Sure, Faces Void sets up nicely and stuff. But Tinker this early? Oh, it's it's weird to me. The synergy is odd. It, it, it's not even about the two heroes. It's just revealing a Tinker pick very early allows the enemy team to prepare for it. And I already think they have two heroes that deal with it nicely. You can't really hide in trees because Wave of Terror, you have the Midnight Pulse, they can cut the trees. Yep. So I, I just want to see... Kaipi, what are you thinking here? What what are you doing? I I'm not certain. And if no diggity want to do it too, they they, they actually banned the venomous themselves. Wow. All right. Um, Ira could go into something like a Spectre. Very very easy to catch out the Tinker. Um, 
Not always easy to, to keep up with the Tinker, obviously, once he gets the Blink Dagger up and running. That's true. Um, you can actually bring back a... Actually, was it ever a the Hero, the Storm Spirit? Uh, Fire played Storm, yeah. He definitely did. He's actually very strong at that hero as well. Um, I mean, Koikwe is a... He's a monstrous hero, player on a lot of heroes, but he did play quite a bunch of Storm. Mm -hmm. um, but, I don't know. I haven't seen Storm being used in this qualifier at all, which saddens me a bit. I think after the Bloodstone buff, he's definitely viable. Uh, I just don't love Storm against Faceless Void. It's, you know, you run into that wall and it cannot, was cannot jump out of it. Uh, was it me casting with you, or was it me casting with... I might have actually cast with Blitz and we talked about the Tinker. And she said, like, Tinker is actually so much more viable because of the changes to Bloodstone. Mm -hmm. He's one of these heroes which uh, really makes the most out of the regeneration. He does, yeah. He can very actively... I mean, he always has that mana region going, mm -hmm. where some heroes do not make 100% use of it. Riam still works on Bloodstone, right? Uh, Riam does work on Bloodstone, so you can suicide again, yes. Yeah. That's, that's true. Because th that was the original thing that happened on the Tinker when the first Bloodstones were picked up. was like, ha ash, was it, a, it, was, it was Fnatic, right? It was Fnatic Southeast Asia? Uh, yeah, it was also just, you know, the old uh, Excalibur days with that Fnatic. A different instance, ah, previous yeah. to uh, Southeast Asia Fnatic. And um, Excalibur, shout out to him. He's one of the biggest monster tinker players that I can think of. Um, but I do not, I do not like seeing Faceless Void and Tinker. I definitely <laughs> get triggered because that was a patch that I did not appreciate. Um, but here we go, seeing a Witch Doctor and a Nature you know, Prophet. You know, in this kind of game, like what I'd love to see is uh, even more deep push because Master Machines will do a, like a lot against the conversions. Sure. Um, as well as Nature's Prophet. But getting something like a Keeper of the Light back into the pool. Or Lina, you know, Witch Doctor Lina could work too. <laughs> yeah, she drowned him. Yeah, no, they're, actually they're drowned doing him. it. Cinder is like, that's a good raft. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind if I take it. It's on the whiteboard now. Okay, okay. Level 1 Roshan. It's so bad though you, now. No, 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 no. You don't even no, get no, level no. 2. No, no, no. Get, 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 get this. This is, this is the reason why this is the reason why it works. All ears. Uh... Because you can make conversions of the Nature's Prophet's Trance really early on. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> uh, oh, Bamboo oh Brute. Oh, God. Um, Bamboo plays an evil brute as well. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, so you, you take level 1 Roshan so you can take Aegis and win the game in 10 minutes because you've lost it in 15. <laughs> <laughs> what a strat, Toby. <laughs> that sounds, sounds just like what I expected, actually. Th All this, right. This may actually be like a... Oh god! What do you even do here? Like it's it's Iridro. Uh, you give Coit for Nature's Prophet maybe mid, and then get something like a Night Stalker for Kesu. You, you could still get a Coit for Hero last and let Kesu play Nature's Prophet. He handles it really well. But it's but just you, a matter you of need, you need something that's going to catch the Brood or mm -hmm. deal with the Brood. And Dro does not, VS does not, Enigma does not. No, I think actually Drow and VS on safe lane and then just TP in a Nature's Prophet with a Dust could definitely set up. Uh, like your, that your vision game is going to be fully reliant on that sprout. Yeah, and then and being wave in range of, of stuns. Wave of Terror is great against Brood as well because it deals damage. So Brood can't actually walk through trees after that. So it's a great way to catch her if she's mm -hmm. sitting in the in the true. tree line. Very true. Uh, it breaks her uh, spin web ability, and uh, Winter Wyvern being banned out here. All right, and Axe getting removed as well. Well, that's a good ban if you ever play Broodmother. You don't really want to have Axe on the enemy team. It's going to be a very sad day. Can you get away with running his event safe lane, just maxing up Cleave? Mm, as no diggity? Yeah. Uh, you could, but it's kind of gimmicky here. Because then you leave your draw hanging quite a bit. Uh, yeah, because the you'd brood have, takes you'd so much attention. Mid, like if you do that. Yeah, brood takes so much attention. You can't really go towards the mid lane with your supports that easily. So and maybe uh, maybe you just do like something like a like a puck like you you get that controller you get the initiation over on the brood mother sure um and puck obviously actually even has kill potential with the draw ranger and the and the prophet yeah uh, draw aura and then prophet tp in and you get a little bit easier laning as well for the puck with the draw aura so yeah sure it, it could work here I'm actually not sure I'm not very happy with how Noldegiri drafted this. Compared to Kaipi. Kaipi has a, a very wild draft, but the Broodmother is going to make it able to pressure a ton. The Carry Void is going to be great against the Drow Ranger, because jumping in and closing the distance is how you want to play it. And against four range heroes, Void is pretty good. He he does make good work with that. And Ooh. oh, it's a DK mid. I like it. Not, actually, that's, oh. a, that's a DK safe. We're running out to Easy Star Drow. 
Um, AKA without the deaths. Right. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. I guess. <laughs> I guess, unless they somehow want to switch up the lanes, but I doubt they will do it. I, I actually think it's going to be a DKA safe here. Yeah, P putting draw against the Broodmother just seems like it's it's one of those like really difficult things. I don't know. And, it's, 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 and DK's a hero, which like, like he's a melee with, with spray, so he can get rid of Brood Spidlings if he wants to, but he also can make the most of the draw aura when he goes into dragon form. I, I just so don't, I just don't like uh, an underlevel DK at all, so that's the downside. I, I don't think... I like the idea of him being safe lane, but he could lane against Brood. Do you really have another choice though? Like, who else is going to lane against Brood? And stop I think the push? if you if you're confident in your rotations on Cinderin and Yapsor, and Yapsor plays a really good Enigma, I think with the Furin as well, you can definitely run a safe lane draw here. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have a little bit of a pause as Yapsor's internet is, you know, being Yapsor. It's crap. <laughs> yeah, it's not the best. Yapsor's not crap, just his internet. Yeah. So that one out there. I actually love Yapso. Yeah, I, he's I, cool. Yeah, I, played a I played a couple of games with him. He's an absolute... He's a larrikin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he, he's a character. I, I played a ton of games with him as well, and against him in pubs as well. He's he's good fun. Yeah. Never Man. take things too seriously. No, knows, how to, knows how to tilt Blitz. I yeah, it's, it's, it's a good... It's a good, it's a good uh, skill. Well, tilting Blitz is not... It's not that hard, actually. It's just uh, <laughs> make fun of him a little bit. Say that he should play Storm Spirit and that he's, he's scared to play it. I see. You know, it's, it's difficult to do that with him now. Because like, Storm with the with the changes becomes a little bit more viable. Like, uh, you, 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 could, like, you could trigger him a little bit by saying, hey, the Storm Spirit really wasn't great that patch before. But I also at the same time, you can't really win a Dota argument with Blitz. He knows too much. Mm. He's too strong. I just, you know, I just say that he's scared. He says that, no, it's not that good. And I'm like, dude, I played tons of Storm. Worked for me. And he's just like, no, I can't do it. <laughs> and he loses. You should teach him your Meepo. Oh, Meepo. I haven't played Meepo uh, since the plus four damage, but it is actually quite a big change. Four extra damage. It, it may sound like a small thing in Dota, but especially when you have multiple clones getting that buff as well, it just makes your lane really, really improved. You know, at level 3, you have good kill potential now. And your last hitting is going to be so much easier. So, maybe I will play a little bit of Meepo. I just don't love the idea of being dead forever. Which is really yeah. Meepo's weakness. You get so much levels, and if you get picked off once, you're like, Oh, I'm dead for 90 seconds, while the guy I died for is dead 40 seconds, despite you him being a carry. How to live longer, or die, or, or be dead less? Be, be dead less. Uh, buy techies. Buy techies. Oh, buy techies. Play techies. Yes. That's true. I mean, techies, techies with bloodstone and then you suicide people. That's good fun. Yeah. Instant respawn at level 25. Yeah. Easily. That stuff's good. Maybe not bloodstone. <laughs> oh, it's great, man. It's, it's, re it's yeah, it may, really not bloodstone at all. <laughs> it's wonderful. Especially if you have a good game, man. Right, my, my build for techies is... Uh, it's obviously... It's, it's Tranquil Soul. Mm -hmm. Um... I normally get the Sage's Mask with the Yule Scepter, but don't complete the Yule Scepter. Go into into Aghanim Scepter, complete the Yule Scepter, and then get Octarine. Sweet. That's, that's, that's my combo. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I played like 200 techie games, and I've spammed it a lot in like ranked and stuff, and people hate me for picking it whenever I do. Mm. But after TF5, you got so many nerfs. But then I looked at this... Um, there's a an American guy. I can't remember his name. He's a he's a techie spammer, and he's like 5.8k or something there in MMR. He's good at techies, and he plays offlane techies exclusively. And he goes for a double null talisman. I tried doing this a little bit. Really? It's actually really strong. Yeah. Double nulls? Why double nulls? Because then you can actually fight. You have some damage on your right click, and you can actually last hit. It's kind of sweet. Instead of going for the immediate soul ring or immediate mana boots that I used to. You know, this this build gives you such a big mana pool that you just plant a lot of mines, and when you run out of mana, you just suicide someone, kill so, that so, guy. So, what do you, what do you start with? Like you start with like like a uh, null and tangles, just a straight null and tangle. Yeah, and, and or or even null and clarity. So if you feel that you're not gonna, but you you have to play like life. solo offlane, right, to make that work. No, duo offlane works. There's a few heroes that are really good for you. Like there's Pudge, there's Darkseer, there's um, and there's the uh, Tusk. But Tusk is not so good anymore. Uh, Dark Seer's uh, Surge is actually the biggest thing. Hmm. Actually, I stack techies every now and then with uh, Lev Khan Pudge. He, you know, famous Pudge player. Yep, yep. Better than Dendi. It's crazy. Okay, the TP out here immediately from Cinderin. 
Wants to get that ward down. Yeah, this time they're not slow on on the on the jump out. Like KP, like game number one, it was it was wards out. Like we see everything before it happens. Dude, I mean, ever since this 50 gold TP scroll, all the supports are like, I'm swimming in money. I'm gonna TP out every time. It really changed a lot. And the wards being slightly cheaper as well, 10 gold less for a server ward, really affected a lot. Bambo is coming to the lane. The Dire Observer War is now going to scout him out. The other four heroes, however, smoke behind. Oh. Now, this is a little odd. Uh, you got you got some nice control, but I don't know if their damage is really up to par. Um, It's not great, actually. But if they get a good cask off, they can always kill. And if they get a good wraparound on Era, like if they come up behind him here, go all the way around, that could work. No, to the fact that oh, uh, they're switching up their lanes, but they, we'll they talk do about this unsmoke. In a they know they want to go around. They see him. Ah, uh, error. He hasn't seen them. He 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 still feels like something is wrong. Oh, and yeah. now, oh. oh, they get their first glimpse. He'll get back to the tier one tower safely. Cinderin's nearby, but yeah, notice who's playing what. Sing Sing's playing number one position in this game. Yeah. Bone Seven's going to be playing the mid tinker, unless he's. Wait, 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 wait. Bambo is going to run a safe lane brood. Yeah, they're switching the lanes because they notice the enemy are not doing standard lanes. Okay, so Sing, Sing plays off lane with Witch Doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, and come with me. So it's an aggro tri lane with Bone 7 in the mid. Yep. I mean, this makes a lot of sense because uh, like Sing Sing never liked to play Tinker. He really never did. <laughs> and uh, I mean, he hated Meepo for a long time as well. Then he spammed a lot of Meepo games and got good at it. Didn't you make him play Tinker? I... I would never. Yeah, q -pad Red Pandas. No, that was... No, we didn't <laughs> play much Tinker. We made him play Kunkka, dude. He was so happy. <laughs> we let him have fun. That's true. He actually then we lost. Enjoy Kunkka. Yeah, you lost every game. Should have yeah. made him play Tinker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Should have made him play like Viper and Razor, the the mid's favorite. It's good fun. Got to watch the CS battle as well for uh, the Joe Ranger. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not going to be anywhere near as easy as, like, Kai Pistro that was played on the top lane. But right now, you've got one deny to your name. I mean, Tinker has pretty good base damage. Even though Drow hits really hard, he can definitely um, get denied by the Tinker. And the laser plays a big part as well. It's a very cheap nuke. And you cannot do anything about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that that nice uh, laser. At the same time, though, after you trigger the laser, Koi can go, at, like, to town on his ass. All he's gonna do is just keep those frost arrows going, but hey, he's taking the trade. He's uh, not too scared, but Corvus is not bringing a salve out. He's just gonna have to like happy tree tango it. But Bone Seven lost a lot of HP, and he has no regen. Like yeah. he's gonna sling out a second salve. Yeah, he will. Well, that's not exactly what you want to have happen on a tinker. You want to get that that bottle as well as BTs up as early as possible. Yeah, and I like this Corvus dealing a ton of damage here. You know, it was actually a big buff to Tinker that Miss is now calculated on hit instead of when you uh, like when you fire the projectile. That means he can laser when the attack is mid-air and make it miss. It's cool. a big buff for laning phase. Yeah. Also a great way to save couriers now, because if you ever have a ranged attack flying to it, just bring it high ground. Bring it one step higher and, you know, attack might miss. They're switching already. Kaipi are rotating out. Either they're not happy with what they've got from the lanes, or they're looking for a kill, but Era, he knows what's coming he his way. Them. The Observer Ward's already there. Yeah. This leaves uh, Sing solo on the offlane. I mean, he has a Void, so he's going to be just fine soloing there. But, yeah, they they didn't feel like they were getting enough done on top, and they're pretty right. Yep, so he's farming a ton, especially as they have... Uh, you know, not being able to go in there and punish him. A completely uncontested jungle. The supports from Kaip are already forced to their safe lane. Mm -hmm. And your top lane is still pretty damn good for an HS Prophet. Like, Sing Sing is able to tick out a lot of the damage, but once Keizu gets those phase boots up and running, yes. it's the worst thing in the world for, for a uh, faceless void. Yeah. Because you're never 100% certain when you got a time walk away. Exactly. Until you get, like, level 7, and that's a long way away. So uh, it's definitely going to be a hard lane when the phase boots are up. And that's not just a face boots fu uh, Furion. That's a face boots and Drow Aura Furion. Mm -hmm. It just makes the difference. It still is kind of like crazy as well. Like we have to keep this in mind. Once the aura starts stacking up, once you get like all of this this damage being applied in the lane, like even Yapsaw's jungle is like like the speed is increased. I'm not gonna say by much because like, like yeah, middle, middle lane bone seven profit TP's in and that's gonna be first blood. Yep. 
The miss actually came from Koifa. He would have had first blood there, but Keizu's attack was still in midair. Sindarin, trouble on bottom lane. He's going to go down. Paralyzing cast bounce over. Here are body blocked. Oh, they're trying. Masakai. They're Masakari. actually keeping him so close. Yeah, but that's such a tanky hero. It's, it's a nice, cute little play there, but they do get one kill out of it, so still fine. But that first spot for Nature's Prophet is the is the bigger thing. He's gonna actually walk to base even though he has the TP scroll uh, ready as he uh, just wants to keep keep his little momentum here. Hmm. And uh, come with me, trying for something on the mid lane, just waiting here. Of course, Kokwa did back to heal up. The double Wraith Band build, nothing out of the ordinary on the Drow. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not as, uh, oh, okay, okay, era, that's a lot of damage. But at least he gets a lot of money back. Yeah, I think he just doubled his CS with that one breathe five, <laughs> and now the Paralyzing Cast gonna bounce over, doesn't come back to era. Still underneath the tower, oh, Yamsol with HP the stuns. Region. Era's gonna survive. They try and, well, okay, they can't do Jack. Enigma's gonna get him, ki uh, get a kill. Yep, and actually a kill on mid as well, as come with me, his patience did pay off. Very nice by him, just sitting there on mid until he finally scores this kill. And uh, yeah, that was that was really Dragonite just being being Dragonite. So tanky, Dragon Bloods on level one, three HP regen, three armor. It's a very real thing. And uh, Topsy is right now is the uh, faceless void as Nature's Prophet left the lane for a while, going for the gank on mid there. He did fall behind a little bit in CS and Sixing, getting level six very soon. Yeah, and he has a smoke from Rubik again now to top lane. Oh, they're gonna go, they're gonna go right now. Well, come with me, gets the pick. Saying drop him down, no Bash. CP supports coming, so they don't even need anything else. Keizu, yeah, yeah, just get one wrath of nature off, get a little bit of CS after death. That's all. That's some skilled void play. I like it. Just bash immediately. Don't need to use ulti. They want to go again on bottom. Like Bambo's got a good a good army of spiders here. So Era initiated on Cinderin, gonna get the sun on Bambo, wow. but it's not gonna stop the spiders from moving forward. And with a spawn spider link into him, the basic attacks, they can dive under the tower again just because. Of the mass army of spiders, oh, so get one, and they'll move for Cinderin as well. The Maledict is on him, so Cinderin's sticking down to the army of spiders. Bambo locked inside the tree, so he'll lose his life for this oh, boss. The and the courier! He it. Okay, they're actually getting way too much out of this, Kaipi. Yep. Even if Muscari dies, they have still taken so much. Wait, ball, what? What is this? Bambo. He's got face boost off cooldown now, though. Yeah. So he'll run through. But oh. Yaxor's gonna finish the job. No denial to Ancients. Yeah. He can't really get it there. Very hard, but... Still, massive play, even though they both die in the end. Getting the curry kill there and all these, you know, killing the Dragonite, killing the Ventral. Actually, they were super unlucky when they went on a Dragonite. Because the bounce did not hit the Dragonite once. It went to a creep twice. That was just really unfortunate. So, uh, the fact that they still brought him down was impressive. Got movement from Cinderin as well as Yapso. yapso has got enough man to get the ulti off, the black hole, if he... Uh Ends up using that soul ring of his. Actually, he's already gone up enough now. But things have like, what is this? All like, the free farm in the world. Yeah, and yep. is he actually going to go? Oh. Like, it looks like he's going to go for your Vanguard build. Kezu. With a jump forward on Keizu. Come with me. I just want to give like massive props to Kai P. Oh wait, they, yeah, okay, yeah, Chrono, yeah. that'll work. I mean, he's been holding on to it for so long, and this time he's like, okay, you, you forced me to use it this time. But still, that's a dead fury again. They are putting a lot of pressure on bottom, but. Uh, uh, they probably will get this tower. I don't really see how they're going to defend this. Not really a big enough spider army. Okay, Ruby uh, coming in. Yeah, bring in help, bring in Fey bolts. Need to get on the support. You can't go on the Dragonite here. Paralyzing Cask. It's going to go to Yapsaw. Maledict, not going to be used, oh. but with a pick up by Come With Me, he just gets stunned and oh, brought gets the down. Off. Okay. Life is not the easiest in the world. Looks like also VS. Bambo picks up a double kill. Era. Running around. Oh, Bambo on the he, hunt. He's got nowhere to go apart from basically his own death. Masakari's staying with him, and yep, Ira's going to go down to the tree line. They make sure the Bambo gets the full triple kill, which is going to skyrocket the speed of this Orchid. Yeah, he's going to get it so fast now after that. And they did defend the tower with quite a bit of HP. Mid now being pressured, but Kezo had to run all the way towards mid after TPing him bottom. His good laning phase and the first blood did not matter at all. He's not struggling. They are getting a lot of damage on the tower, and it's gonna go down before anyone gets there. Yep. The upside of Dro. Oh, Sing Sing, thank you very much. Yep. He is going for it. You know, I really wanted this. Makes me happy. 
The Vanguard build over on Sync. Dude, so many people buying Vladimir's and Mask of Madness. It's actually really good for him to get the Radiance in this game as well. Yeah. Like, go for the full combination. Against Adolans, against the Nature's Prophets, and oh. yeah, just in general. E ev everything is nice. And normally a Dro Ranger doesn't want to have to build in to something like a Monkey King bar. You know, Toby, you've been such an opponent to my Vanguard Radiance builds, but here, what you're accepting opponent? it. I wasn't an opponent. Oh, you definitely were. I was not an opponent. No, you were more of a nemesis. I... Because I was just hearing it's like, oh, offlane faces void picks up this. No, oh, no, no, not offlane. But you know, he's an offlane carry in this game. Smoke break. Where's oh. dust? They get the dust off. Bambo stunned up. Nice mover from No hole. Diggity, and yep, the black hole holds Bambo in position. All the spiders die as well. No one can tell the tale of what happened here. It's good that Era is also the one to get the kill. Yeah, it really is. He needs to get some of this gold. Meanwhile, top lane. <laughs> yeah, but this is going to be the first tower that Kaipi claim. They're not really putting too much tower damage in. They have to, like, you be, you be aware that you're up against an Enigma and a Nature's Prophet. Just that alone, where mm -hmm. we have to say you're going to lose out in the tower trade. Yeah. But then you had a Draw Ranger on top of that, and a Dragon Knight, who I have not seen actually pop Dragon form yet. Yeah, he hasn't, actually. He's holding on to it. They're going They're Roshan. Pinging for the Rosh, nine Wait, was that, was that Diggity ping, or was uh, that actually Kai P working that it was, out? That was Diggity. Uh, now, 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 Kai well, P are pinging it. Yeah. They have an observer ward, <laughs> which is just down on the bottom on the bottom river. Yeah, it just gave them enough vision, and uh, the web has gone down over Roche Pit. Spiders are flying in. No, Diggity using the same ward as they uh, had before. It's a very defensive one, difficult to uh, to quickly de ward. Yeah, it is. Just gonna mess with them a little bit, but no Roche being taken here. Kai P now wondering, can we go for this bottom tower? They do have a position where they could push. Creeps are really far away though. It's going to be hard. Like, Wrath of Nature's coming off cooldown. Uh, DK is actually at a point now where his D push is quite good. Yeah. Because uh, you got th th three points, almost four points up in uh, Breathe Fire. Sure. But there's one big thing about to happen just about now, and that is the Tinker has almost 2,000 gold stacked up. So Travos is going to come in, and the Global Presence is going to Going to start from Bone 7, see what he can do with it. Well, luckily they get something else to help counter that. Uh, AKA Cinderin now has the Tome, which means level 6. <laughs> he has the Tome. Yep. He's done his reading. <laughs> Read a book. Read a book. That's what I like to do as a mid player. I just buy a Tome and put it on my support and go, Go educate yourself. <laughs> get your levels. As a mid player, I wish to just sit in mid lane, not take any farm, and just read a book. <laughs> exactly. Destroying pubs one by one. Mass TP's coming to the top lane. They already know they got bottom. Uh, an era? Like, are they going to force this? If they're going to fight it, they probably need Void, I think. Uh, they, drum, they drum charge away. Yeah. Void's they're staying bottom, though. Fight. Looking for a pick, maybe? Nah. Or Prophet. Keizu. He walks straight past Bambo because they got no reveal. So I don't know what they really are looking to achieve. I mean, like he's, he's got the dust, but you'd have to go for a blind dust to find Bambo. There's webs all over the place, so your risk of failure yeah, is so, so high. Uh, is nah, he? Oh, no, I thought it was he's more spiders. I actually thought, thought it was more spiders. Yeah, he has the mech as well, so he's pretty safe. And baby does. She doesn't have a single point up in bite. Yeah, this early, you don't really want to. More points in web just makes it easier to play elusive Dola. The dust hit Bambo. Oh, he needs to run. Uh, he's <laughs> making his way up to the hillside. Yeah, Runs he's just over counting. It. Oh, very nice. He's so hard to catch here, and that's the entire team wasting time. This is. I can't really put in words how bad that was for Diggity. Just all that time invested trying to chase and they get nothing out of it. I just can't believe we're watching the team which was completely undefeated in this group stage so far against a team who's been struggling very hard in the group stage. Yeah. I, it's... I, it looks like a completely different team. Diggity yep. right now are not very composed. They're just... Oh, you know, they find... Well, do they? Oh. Bone 7, because Bear Bone, the like Bone, Bone 7 can go onto any spiders or anything, it's just too easy. Yavsaw's dropping so low, Sing Sing, a double chrono, Cinder and Era caught out, Witch going doctor. for the Death Ward, but Gust's already been used, you can't cancel that one, so two of them will drop. And this will be the tier 2 tower to go down in mid as well. Yeah, just beautiful, beautiful execution by Kaipi there, nice chronosphere. Witch Doctor, of course, always been a good hero with Void. And uh, yeah, that's just the tower going down. And some kills as well. Bottom lane, we see Kezu trying to find farm in the enemy jungle. Going for the Orchid build. Very good against the uh, non-BKB faceless void. Wonder if he's going to go into Manta style with this. Yeah, he is building towards the Yasha. He has it, actually. Mm -hmm. So, once he gets that Orchid, I mean, 
the Void might even have his Manta already. It's going to be a sad timing for him. It will be. Uh, don't take any need away to get back into this game. Oh, Furion TPing for a Bone 7, but there's also a Sing Sing. Uh -huh. he, he's probably fine. Sing doesn't have Chrono. Yeah. Without that, he won't really want to fight. Yeah. Oh God. Pambo is, like, such a nuisance. He really is. And he's just taking up a lot of space where the enemy need to farm. I mean, diggity, they could farm these Ancients with a Drow Aura. They definitely could, but it's just getting hard here. And, uh, okay, dropping down a ward and a sentry. Trying to control this bottom lane. They, they need to see where the Broodmother is at all times. Prophet, okay, he's actually going to TP down the bot. But they don't have the uh, full vision. The dust going to oh, go on the Broodmother. He can't get the Sprout off. They'll get a little of extra vision. Face boots as well. This Brood is not that easy to catch. Cinder and Mike swap. swap. Yeah, there it is. Swapping back. Get the stun off. The dust has worn off, but Bambo will still die. And man, again, they needed this. Like, that's going to help the armlet arrive for the Dragon Knight. And they instantly want to go for Roshan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they need to get something out of this. The little time that the Broodmother is dead, they need to start getting an advantage. Because right now, this game is not looking too great for them. They don't have the damage to Koi for, though. And these spiders are still sitting inside the pit. Yeah, the spiders like are just keeping track of it. And a traveling. Oh! Oh, oh, okay, this is yeah, that would have been really bad for him. Because the Observer word. Oh, he's going in again. Oh, he's going for it, though. Yeah, he's going in. The Obs might see him. March the Machines on the back lines. And then you got the rest of Kaipi coming in through the front. Sing Sing. He's got Chrono available. Leaps himself forward. Does he just want to get a solo pick off over on Keizu? Well, right now, Bone 7 is still on the run. Does he actually survive? Oh, no, he doesn't. So close Keizu TP'd up and away from Sing Sing. Yep. That was, you know, an aggressive play. And they didn't think they had a ward there. But they did. Not to place the TP in. <laughs> and, uh, pretty costly death there on the Tinker as well. Gonna stop their advantage a little bit and... But no, he didn't take the take Roshan. Uh, they didn't finish the job they started. Uh, they didn't. And when everyone is live on Kaipi, they could even throw a question mark to this. They're already going in, just having a look. He wants the D ward. Oh no, he gets bashed up. Is it gonna be owned by Roshan? Tries with a TP! Oh no, 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 Oh, uh, where was Roshan? Yeah, Where's four, the fist, boys? Four hits by Roche, but no bash. Uh, Tick is going to BT himself forward. What's stolen? So it's Wave of Terror stolen by Kamami. Three levels of it. Arcane Rune on Rubik as well. Okay. Oh, is that this actually spell. makes it so easy for them to like, finish up Roshan. It does. It right. helps a bit. Uh, you've already got the spiders there, but you give the negative armor against Roshan. Yeah, yep, there she blows. Wait, <laughs> it <laughs> stacks. One. It actually stacks. Wait. Hang on. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, no. I, I was looking at Bamboo and I just saw him go from from uh, negative one to five, and I'm just like, oh, oh that's yeah. Roshan. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. That's true. That's I tripped a little. <laughs> it's fine. So Aegis going over the vey, the vey. Very, uh, very happy void here. Uh, this game is just. Uh, is 5k net worth in favor of Kai P at the moment? The experience is a lot closer. It feels like it could be more, though. Like, they're controlling the game a lot, and Diggity are kind of just playing by their rules. Especially, I mean, we do see that a lot when Broodmother gets picked, but Diggity struggling this much just feels out of character. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're drawing on the map, but that's not where everyone is, though. Come with me, sneaking around. And I'm wondering how long it's going to remain in this position, because at this point, like, Kai P, they've got great split push, but taking high ground, they're pretty pathetic at. Yeah. And that's where no diggity, like, they've got a lot of deep push up their sleeves. Potentially they could get one big fight and then just push hard if they've got enough still alive. Yeah. Well, I think they just want to farm up, right? They want to get some some extra items on this void before they start pushing high ground or anything like that. They can definitely threaten tier 2 towers with the brood though. From bottom lane. Or There's the Wave of Terror over on 2. That's the oh one that was God. stolen by Come With Me. And there goes an Aegis Prophet. We <laughs> swap back Cinder and actually, I don't know what he was hoping with that. Uh, like, I have an ability to be off cooldown once I respawn, but two quick picks. Yeah, two quick picks and a tower and no trade. That's what I'm Ad seeing. Addy stole Nature's call. Yeah. You know, you know how I s how I was saying like, oh, you know, they're, they're push up high ground. It's really pathetic. <laughs> you actually got a nice army now, yeah. which is there with come with me, and they could try and force the issue right now. Spiders and trees unite. Rubik is doing it. The last game was a 19 minute and 30 second GG call. The first loss of no diggity. And it's up to a level 1 Midnight Pulse to slow this push, but with Bone 7's March to the Machines, 
No diggity can't walk into this. One more summon from the trees here as well. This is a big army now. Yeah. Where's the defense? Yeah, there is none. Like the counter push is good, but it's not really online yet, and they're not really f ready for an army of like that size. Eras breathe fire will help. Yeah. But you just lost your tier three tower 18 and a half minutes in. Yeah, that's a massive take. I mean, the tier three towers are so important as well now that they give the armor. Because if they ever want to push Hagan on on bottom lane now, it's much easier. And they're not even backing out. No, they have Aegis. They've got Aegis and Chrono. Mm -hmm. And you and you probably still believe you can take out the rank. So Tinker ran out of mana, TP's into the catapult, and now Chrono, Sing Sing, he's holding on to it. Yeah. Like he's actually taking the melee racks, even though the range racks probably gonna be the easier target early on. I, I would prefer to see him go for range racks, but they're kind of doing that at the same time with their uh, catapults, just smacking away at it. Are they yeah. almost trying to force a reaction? Well, they are going to get the Metal oh, in from no behind. Oh. Yapsaw, find the opening. No, the Observer Syndrome. Ward's down. Syndrome, like this. The smoke is going to break. He gets his own Observer Ward down, however, so at least no diggity can get some vision of what's going on. But now Rubik... He, okay, he's stealing more things. He stole Swap. Okay. So they got more escape mechanisms. Sing Sing still refuses to use this Chronosphere as he time lapses off the damage. They will take the racks. The only thing that was lost was Syndrome. Under protection of the uh, Tinker as well. This Rax is just going down. There's no contesting. Wow. Diggity just kind of falling flat here. A team with Prophet, DK, Enigma, Drow Ranger. You just lost a Rax yourself at 20 minutes. Yeah, they're shoving them back in their base. And <laughs> I don't know if they're going to have an easy time leaving their base after this. Because Tinker controlling so much of the map. And he's going for that Bloodstone. I just can't believe that we're in this situation. Like, in game one... No diggity, get drone. Then they try it themselves, and then things just go like, from no, 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 <laughs> not like that. You remember how when you had those games and the teams like, I don't know really what to do now, so their draft looks un unbeatable, and they copy the exact draft, yeah, and then fail with it. Exactly. Th that's that's not what this is, but it's just that whole. Well, we got this really like, good idea, like we can have really good damage and push, but the synergy just doesn't seem to be happening. The Brood by the pickup has you know, just I, thrown them off. I think Brood is a great hero against Diggity for one big reason. You know why? why? They love playing supports that are not good against Brood. Vengeful. She doesn't do much. Bane. It, it can't play against Brood. These two heroes, and they pick supports early very often. So I think that's a good abuse pick against Diggity. Because uh, sure, you have some cores that can deal with it. I mean, Dragonite was a good reactive pick. And he's definitely going to do pretty fine clearing the spiders. And laning phase is fine, I guess. But you need good supports to deal with the Brute. There's no doubt about that. Heroes that are not bad against it. Yeah. And uh, top, Kezu, trying to get some tower here. He will get the tier 1 tower down for his team. Take the small victories. Aegis Immortal is going to time out, so Kai P maybe not feeling as confident. But you got a Manta as well as Vanguard over on the Faceless Void. Yeah, he's so tanky now. And, and we have to like, keep oh, in the mind... Whoa! Hello! Whoa! The swap swap! Come on me, saved his core and Sing Sing! No, the stun! He'll still get the Chrono over on two. Quite for us while Cinderin caught out with that one. Actually isolating Era because the Chrono was right on the edge. And Yapsaw, Black Hole cancelled by the Orchid of Bambo. They've lost two. They're gonna lose three underneath that tier three. Oh boy. Oh, this is brutal. That is a three for nothing team fight, And they don't... They don't have any signs of life here. Diggity, I mean, they could maybe buy back to DK to hold this. They can't lose one more set of racks. They need to fight under this tower, but they're just dead. You can say goodbye to that tier three. Yeah. It, 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 you don't have anything. This is looking a lot like Kaipi is about to take a 2-0 against the undefeated There Diggity. it is. They oh. call it. GG. We don't even have 40 minutes worth of game time In coming out series. from the series. It's... What a performance by, by KP, and their fate now is in the hands of Empire and Power Rangers. It truly is. That makes that series so much more interesting as well. Empire took game number one in that series, so if Power Rangers hit back and actually go one uh, like one over Empire in this, it forces a three-way tie because of these results. You will still have uh, no diggity through a number one position just because of their undefeated flawless round before this series. So they'll end with a 6-2 result. Kaipi will end uh, with a... Uh, actually, Kaipi end with a 4-4. And right now, you have... 3-3 uh, three, three and 3-3. Three, three yeah. 
on so Empire and Power yeah, Rangers. So yes, that's currently what it is. That's not including the one game already won. I, if that happens, it would be, you know, yeah. bringing them to a four for it. Yeah. So you are correct. It would bring them to, to a tie. To a three-way tie. And that is if Power Rangers win the next one. Uh yes, that's only if Power Ra Power Rangers win. So, wow, what a 